All right, so in the last video, we got our diagonalization theorem, which tells us everything we need to know to determine if A is diagonalizable. Let's actually do the math and walk through figuring out if A is diagonalizable and how to diagonalize it. All right. So here is our example. You want to diagonalize A, if possible, for our matrix A equals 2, 0, negative 1, 3. So here is the first step. Number one, we need to find the eigenvalues of A. Luckily, our matrix is triangular. So it's quick and easy to see that our eigenvalues are 2 and 3. Three. Step two, once you've found the eigenvalues of A, we need to find the corresponding eigenvectors. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we need to um, come up with our augmented matrix, right? So we need an augmented matrix for A, let's do the first one, lambda equals 2, so A minus 2i, set it equal to 0. Alright, so when we do that math, we should get down the columns, 0, 0, a negative 1, 1, 0, 0. All right, so we can easily solve, right, and get a general solution. Where x1 is 1, or whatever we want it to be, and um, x2 is 0. So we see that a basis for our eigenspace A2 is going to be 1, 0. You could do um, any um, linear combination of this uh, vector will be our basis. So we could do 2, 0 will form a basis. 11, 0, negative 5, 0, that's a basis. All right, next we want to use our second eigenvalue, which is 3. So a minus 3i. All right, so down the columns, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And then we would solve, and then you would see that a basis for this eigenspace is 1, negative 1, or any scalar multiple of that. All right, so the next thing we need to do, we got two um, eigenvectors here, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, but our um, diagonalization theorem says they need to be linearly independent. So we need to verify that V1, I'm going to go with the first one and call it V1, and V2, our second eigenvector, 1, negative 1, are linearly independent. What do we think? There's only two of them, so it's easy to check. They are linearly independent, which is great. OK, 
Okay, so this works perfectly for our diagonalization theorem because A is a two by two matrix and we have two linearly independent eigenvectors. So we can use the diagonalization theorem and construct our matrices. So step three is to construct P from the eigenvectors. Eigenvectors. So remember our matrix P is just our eigenvectors side by side. So for us in this problem, P is going to be the matrix 1, 0, 1, negative 1. Step four, we need to construct D, right? Because we're trying to agonize P, D, P inverse. We will construct D from the corresponding eigenvalues. All right, so if we did V1 First, in our matrix P, we have to use the eigenvalue that it came from, the 2. So we're going to use the 2 first when we construct our D. So D will have our eigenvalues down the diagonal, 2 and 3, and then zeros everywhere else. All right, and then the final step is just to verify that this is correct, that we did find the right diagonalization. So we have all the components. All right, so final step, we need to verify that A equals P, D, P inverse. And as we get bigger and bigger matrices, it may be very difficult to find P inverse. You could also instead verify that AP equals PD. And I typically do this one because it's easier than finding the inverse, but you can do whichever you want. So first, I'm gonna multiply A times P. So if we go back, so the very beginning, our matrix A is 2, 0, negative 1, 3. And our matrix P is 1, 0, 1, negative 1. And we multiply these together, I got down the columns, 2, 0, 3, negative 3. All right, so that's AP. Now I want to find PD and make sure that I get the same result. We got our P. And then our D. All right, and when I multiply these two, I get 2, 0, 3, negative 3. Same result, this checks out. So our matrix A is diagonalizable. And A, which is, I'll write the whole statement out for us. A equals P, D, P inverse, where P is our matrix P. And D is our diagonal matrix D. All right, let's do 
one more example and I'll do it in the next video.